Hey everybody, welcome back to the next episode of the Balanced Vibes podcast. My name is Kirsten and today's episode is a Q&A podcast. So it means that I'm going to answer some questions, three questions uh, that you have asked me, uh, whether it's been in my DMs on Instagram or YouTube comments, or some of you have also emailed me. So I'm always happy to get these questions. And if you have some too, please make sure um, to let me know. You can, like I said, hit me up on Instagram DMs or leave a comment on YouTube, however you uh, can reach me best. So uh, today we're talking about three different things. The first question that I got was, how many calories can I cut? If I want to do a cut, is 500 calories okay? Okay. The next question is, why should we do carb cycling? I've heard that this is a thing that you do when you're mac macro counting. Why is that important? And the last question, and that's more like a comment, I'm feeling so guilty for wanting body change. What can I do about it? Okay, so all awesome questions, comments. So let's jump right in. How many calories can I cut? Can I cut? So I got this question from somebody who, uh, who literally asked me this question. Hey, I want to do a cut. Is 500 calories okay? And you probably realize that this is a really difficult question to answer because I don't know anything about this person. But I would say that for most people, unless they are really, really obese, uh, 500 calories super quickly overnight, maybe a little too much, very likely is too much. And if somebody says that, sure, yeah, 500 calories is fine without knowing anything about you, without, uh, without asking anything, um, any questions about your health status, your, your past, your, um, you know, your periods, if you're a woman, all that kind of stuff. If somebody's like that and they give you the red, uh, sorry, the green light to go ahead and cut 500 calories, then to me, this is a really, really bad sign and I would not listen to it. But it's hard to tell anything if I don't know the person. So now the conversation got on. I said that, hey, you know, I don't know anything about you, but I do have a feeling that 500 calories is too much for most people. And the next question was, well, can I cut 300? <laughs> and the answer is the same. I cannot tell you that. I cannot tell you how many calories is okay for you to cut because I don't know anything about you. And then what came out was that in, in the third email was that this person actually was having hypothalamic amenorrhea currently. And here's where things get interesting. So what I want to say is that when you are recovering from hypothalamic amenorrhea, you don't have a peer because you have been under eating severely, you've been overtraining a lot. Your least and last concern should be how many calories can you cut once you have recovered. Because your job right now is to first get recovered, right? Don't let, you know, let's not get ahead of uh, things here. And definitely 500 calories is going to be too much, definitely too much, because if you have HA, then you just cannot be a severely obese person, right? You just are not. So when we start cutting 500 calories a day, then this is gonna be dangerous. And Oh, I just, <laughs> I, I don't even have words, like how many times I've seen it. And actually just this week, a past client reached out to me and she said, hey, you know what? Like I relapsed, I lost my period again and I asked what you did and she cut like ridiculously low calories. She got her periods like first three, four months, everything was great. But then she was like, but my friend was doing the super low calorie diet and I dropped my calories down to 1500. And of course, if you used to eat 2,300 and then you drop your calories to 1,500, of course your period is going to go away. I mean, to me, it's a, absolutely like a no-brainer. No of course it's going to happen. So that being said, it doesn't mean that you cannot decrease your calories gradually and do it via careful macro tracking and keeping an eye on everything. Yes, you are able to cut your calories a little bit if your goal later is to change your body composition and the way your body looks and feels and how much you weigh and all that, you can do it, but it has to be done gradually. You cannot go from 2300 to 1500 and expect that everything is going to be fine. And to me, it's like, why are you even surprised? Because we have talked about it a lot. I've shared about it like everywhere on my YouTube channel and on my podcast too, I believe. Um, that, you know, this is just too, too big of a cut. And yeah, coming back to, to the fact that this person even didn't have a period yet. So you should not be worrying about how much you can cut because once you get your period back, you got to stabilize your body. You got to stay there and hang out there and let your body fully heal. Maybe it's going to take like six months and until you can start reducing anything. So this is not your job right now to think about how many calories can you cut and 500 is definitely going to be too much. 
All right, next, let's talk about somebody who is healthy and happy and just wants to change your body composition a little bit and is getting started with macros, and I am a macro coach as well, and happy to help you with your body composition goals. But this person has, why should, uh, why should we do carb cycling when tracking macros and dieting? So carb cycling, if you don't know, carb cycling is basically uh, eating one or two or three days a week higher carbohydrates and higher calories than you do the rest of the days in the in the week. And the reason why this is important that it, it signals our metabolism that we are not dieting all the time because we may be in a little bit of caloric deficit. I mean, if we want to lose weight, we are in a little bit of caloric deficit. But by having, by like putting in there like the one or two or three higher carbohydrate days, we're signaling our bodies that we are not dieting all the time. And you can rest and you can relax and you can be chill because there's going to be more carbs and more calories coming in a couple of days a week. And this approach has been shown to really regulate your hormones better and so that you're, you still keep producing the right hormones. Of course, everything has to be monitored and you can't just like guess your way there. You have to exactly know how to do it, but so that your hormones stay healthy and your periods, of course, stay healthy and your sleep stays healthy and all that. But uh, I gotta say that carb cycling is really, really um, good idea. Uh, the only time when I don't do it is when I do, I mean, with my clients is when we do reverse dieting because then we just keep adding calories until we reach that level uh, of calories that ma matches with our energy output. Let's say that you're burning 2000 days, then you want to be able to eat 2000 calories a day. So we have to get back to that level. Uh, so this is the time when we don't do carb cycling. But then if the goal is the opposite, you want to lose some body fat and you want to get to a better composition, body composition, then carb cycling is really, really helpful. Also, without carb cycling, you're more likely to hit a plateau, which is what most people hit at some point on their weight loss journey. And that should not be a surprise. It just happens. It's one of the most normal things because no weight loss or fat loss is going to be uh, super linear all the time. But if we implement carb cycling, then uh, we're going to hit that plateau later. It's going to be shorter. It's going to be less and we can go, um, we can get over it faster. So to have a good hormonal balance, to send your body a signal that we're not dieting all the time, you're going to have those a uh, couple of, you know, higher, higher carbohydrate, higher calorie days. These um, really help our metabolism to thrive. And that's why we are doing carb cycling. Okay, and then the last question slash comment um, that I got last week was that I am feeling so guilty about body change. Actually, I got two messages, pretty similar um, idea. So one of them said that I am so happy that I hired you as a coach because my last coach didn't want to hear like a single word from me about wanting to change my body because she, she said that this is always a bad thing. It's always a negative thing. You should never want that. You don't have self-respect, self-love if you want to lose your body uh, fat and so on and so on. And the other uh, comment was that um, I, I had to, you know, leave some of the, so the groups that I was in because I mentioned that I want to change my body. Uh, and th this was seen as like a terrible, like negative things. And, you know, people were not nice to me and all that kind of stuff. And I got to say that, how, how would I even say it? Um, if your body is healthy, then there's nothing bad in wanting to change the way it looks. I just want to remove that guilt and shame. We have so much of it already in our lives as, as women, right? So if we now add another layer to it and start feeling guilty for wanting to change a perfectly healthy and functioning body, just so that we feel better, maybe we can perform better in our sport, maybe we want our clothes to fit better, and saying again, I've said it twice already, but saying one more time, and we are already healthy, then this is not something to be ashamed of. This is not something to be feeling bad about or feeling like I'm too vain or I'm I'm do I'm being um I'm not loving myself because this is not absolutely not true. Like since when do we do we equal wanting to take um, care of our bodies to or not wanting to take care of our bodies but like self love with not being able to change it or being like super happy all the time and not changing because because that's a bad thing somehow and i like what one of my friends said once she said that hey you know what like if we're not supposed to change our bodies anymore it's kind of like saying that you already graduated from high school don't ever learn anything anymore because you're arrived 
And I mean, we all want to get better. We all want to evolve. And maybe part of you getting better, liking yourself more, being more at peace with yourself, feeling more confident, maybe part of that is changing your body a little bit. And I don't know why this is so demonized and I'm not a fan of it. And I think it's perfectly okay thing to do. I've done it very, very successfully myself, per uh, personally. And of course, I've had other clients too. And I, I don't have clients who hate themselves. I really don't have clients who hate themselves because this is a separate issue. Like if you hate yourself so much and if your body, if you hate your body so much that you really think that, okay, only weight loss is going to make me happy then I cannot work with that person because this is clearly outside of my scope. This person has to talk to somebody who's like a therapist or like eating disorder specialist or body dysmorphia specialist, but um, these are not the people that I can work with. So my clients don't hate themselves, right? But they want to change their body because they want to feel better, right? And there's nothing to be ashamed of, okay? So these are things that I have for you today. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, I'm super, super happy to take them. I am on Instagram at Kirsten Kimura. And of course, you can always drop a comment uh, on YouTube as well. So thank you so much for being here and I'll see you again next time. Bye.